Given the standard equation of a hyperbola, we want to graph and find the major components of the hyperbola. The first thing we need to recognize is that the form of the equation tells us whether we have a horizontal or vertical transverse axis. Notice in our equation, we have the x part of the equation minus the y part, so because the x part is first, or the x part is the positive fraction, we'll have a horizontal transverse axis, sometimes called the major axis. And that would be this axis here. Just to review, if the y part of the equation was first, and then we had minus the x part, we'd have a vertical transverse axis, and therefore the hyperbola would open up and down. But our equation fits this form, so the hyperbola will open left and right. Next, the center of the hyperbola will have coordinates h, k. So because we have the quantity x minus two squared, the x coordinate is going to be positive two. And because we have the quantity y plus one squared, the y coordinate will be negative one. So our center has coordinates two negative one, which would be this point here. Next, the denominator of the first fraction or what I think of as the positive fraction is going to be a squared, so a squared equals nine. Then the denominator of the fraction that we're subtracting is b squared, so b squared equals four. So we have a squared equals nine, so the positive value of a would be a equals three, and b squared equals four, so the positive value of b would be b equals two. Knowing these two values help us find the vertices of the hyperbola as well as the endpoints of the conjugate axis. The vertices are also the endpoints of the transverse or major axis, and because we have a horizontal transverse axis, the endpoints or the vertices will be a units to the left and right of the center. And since a is equal to three, one vertex will be three units to the left, or this point here, the other vertex would be three units to the right, or this point here. So looking at the coordinate plane, we can see the coordinates of the two vertices would be negative one, negative one, and five, negative one. We could have also found these by adding and subtracting three to the x-coordinate of the center. Notice two minus three is negative one, two plus three is five. Now let's come back to the foci. Let's find the endpoints of the conjugate axis. Well, this is the conjugate axis that has a length of two times b, and since the center is the midpoint, from the center, if we go up and down b units, we'll find the two endpoints of the conjugate axis, which is also called the minor axis. And since b is equal to two, if we go down two units, this would be one endpoint. If we go up two units, this would be the other endpoint of the conjugate axis. So again, looking at the coordinate plane, we can see the endpoints would have coordinates two, negative three, and two, one. Of course, we could also add and subtract two from the y coordinate of the center to obtain these coordinates. Notice that negative one minus two is negative three, negative one plus two is positive one. Now that we have the endpoints of the transverse and conjugate axis, we're going to form a rectangle that will help us sketch the asymptotes of the hyperbola. We're going to form a rectangle so that these four black points will be the midpoints of each side, so the rectangle would look like this. Again, this is the transverse axis or major axis, and this would be the conjugate or minor axis. And the asymptotes of the hyperbola would contain the diagonals of this rectangle. So our two asymptotes would look like this and look like this. So before we find the equation of the asymptotes though, let's go ahead and find the coordinates of the foci. And again, because we have a horizontal major axis, the two foci will be c units to the left and right of the center. But we don't have the value of c, we'll have to find it using the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared, since we know a squared and b squared. So we would have c squared equals a squared or nine plus b squared or four, 
So c squared equals 13. We're only concerned about the positive value of c, so we'll take the principal square root. This isn't going to simplify. We're going to have c equals square root 13. But because we're going to use this value to plot points on the coordinate plane, we also want the decimal approximation. This is approximately 3.606. So going back to our graph, the two foci will be approximately 3.6 units to the right and left of the center. So starting at the center, if we go to the left, approximately 3.6 units would be about here. And 3.6 units to the right of the center would be approximately here. Notice how to find the exact coordinates of the foci, we would have to add and subtract square root of 13 to the x-coordinate of the center because the foci are to the left and right of the center. So because the center has coordinates 2, negative 1, the focus on the left would have coordinates 2 minus square root of 13, comma, negative 1, and the focus on the right would have coordinates 2 plus square root of 13, comma, negative 1. And now for the last step, we're going to find the equations of the asymptotes. And since I'm not a big fan of memorizing formulas, we'll go and use the graphs of our lines to find our equations. For example, if we consider the asymptotes, or these two lines here, notice how both lines contain the center, or contain the point two, negative one. So if we can find the slope of these lines, we can then use point-slope form of a line to find the equation. And this is another reason why this rectangle is very helpful. For example, if we consider again the center and this point here, we can determine the slope. We would go up B units and write A units, or up two units and write three units. Therefore, the slope of this line, we'll call it M sub one, is equal to two thirds. Then looking at the other line, notice how we'd have to go down B units and write A units, or down two units and write three units. So the slope of the second asymptote, m sub two, is equal to negative two-thirds. So now we know the slopes of the lines, and we know that the lines both contain the point two, negative one, we can find the equations of our asymptotes. And let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So now using point-slope form of a line, where the point would be the center of the hyperbola that both lines contain, and we just found the slopes of the two asymptotes. The one equation of the asymptote would be y minus negative one, or y plus one, equals the slope two-thirds times the quantity x minus x sub one, or x minus two, which means the second equation would be y plus one equals negative two-thirds times the quantity x minus two. Let's go ahead and clear the parentheses and solve for y so our equations are in slope-intercept form. So we'll have y plus one equals two-thirds x, two-thirds times negative two, that'll be minus four-thirds. And we'll go ahead and subtract one on both sides. Well, subtracting one is the same as subtracting three-thirds. Negative four-thirds minus three-thirds is negative seven-thirds, so minus seven-thirds. Now for the second line, we'd have y plus one equals negative two-thirds x, plus four-thirds. Again, subtract one on both sides. So we have y equals negative two-thirds x. This would be positive four-thirds minus three-thirds, or one-third. These would be the two equations of our asymptotes. Now let's finish by graphing our hyperbola. We know the hyperbola will contain each vertex and approach the asymptotes. So the graph of the hyperbola would look something like this, and like this. Okay, hope you found this explanation helpful.